What's up, Collider TV? Talk bands, Josh McCuga here. Eyes a little bit swollen because we're up a little bit earlier. <laughs> it's a 9 a.m. live Collider TV talk for the foreseeable future. This is the time you can check out Collider TV talk. Uh, it's it's a little early. I know Adam and Cody back there. They're they're just trucking through. They are professionals. Grace Hancock is here. She's a professional. Oh, hello. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Pillow Face Tuesdays, otherwise known as <laughs> Sassy Tuesdays. Uh, tweet me your Twitter questions. Send me some good ones. It's early. Wake me up. Spice it up, guys. At Mrs. Gray's face. Hashtag Collider TV Talk. Hashtag Ginger Mother of Dragons. Who's this guy? That's David Griffin, the great British man himself. <laughs> Happy to be back. Great, but... We are back in the midst of things. Things are happening. We got new shows coming out. I know. We have You're the Worst is on tonight. American Horror Story, which I know Josh is going to be glued to the oh. television oh, watching right. American Horror Story. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Cult. Um, unfortunately, um, and this is if you, you know if you guys watch the channel, you know that I have a, a lot of trouble with scary stuff. Um, just I had a really bad sure. dream last night about ghosts, mostly because I'm so stressed out about tonight. No. Because last week I almost killed Mark Ellis and Jeremy Johns via hot sauce. Um, you guys can watch the story on the Schmoes No Show. Uh, as punishment, I am being forced to go see it tonight. Uh, I'm going to oh, the it's screening tonight. of it. It's tonight. Um, oh. Did not sleep well last night. Did not sleep well Sunday night. Oh, All gosh. in anticipation of knowing that I have to sit through two hours and 15 minutes of that stupid clown movie. Uh, so... Uh, that's happening tonight. Uh, we'll I hope that they sure got you in your own theater so that all this screaming oh, doesn't no. disrupt like normal just, theater people goers. People in that theater are going to be like, who is that person? <laughs> like, what's wrong? That is an adult man with a beard. He should not be <laughs> screaming like that. So I got to do that tonight. So I won't be watching American Horror Story, but we do have a ton of good TV coming out. And... I mean, today we're talking Narcos. David and I had solid binge this weekend. Did you get to watch any of Narcos? I not it's, nope. It's okay. It's totally fine. You learn Spanish this weekend. It's a, you, learn Spanish. <laughs> you learn Spanish. David oh, and I both see, are see. fluent in Spanish now. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, True Detective season three. All kinds of good stuff. So let's get into it. Grace, what's first? All right. So Netflix has announced that it will be adding Oscar winner Damon Chazelle's new musical series, The Eddie, to its slate of original programming. The Eddie is a drama that revolves around a Paris club, its owner, the house band, and the chaotic city that surrounds them. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Josh's new favorite show is gonna be on soon, people. <laughs> bup, 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 it's Paris. <laughs> bup, 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 we're singing. <laughs> Berets and baguettes and doing French stuff. Cigarettes. Like, come on. It's. David, S take it. Great. <laughs> I, I enjoyed La La Land. Um, I also enjoyed Drumline as well. Wait, right, did Jamie Chazelle do Drumline? Do you mean Drumline? Whiplash? I think you mean oh, Whiplash. Whiplash. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Drumline is Nick Cannon. That's Nick Cannon. My bad. That's Nick Cannon. <laughs> I was getting that mixed up. Sorry. Drumline. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's about drumming. People are drumming. It's the same thing. No. Um, <laughs> Drumline didn't win any Oscars. We're plus one like three. <laughs> oh, man. Could you imagine? People get uh, Nick Cannon that was a good and movie. J.K. Remember Orlando Simmons Jones in that up. movie? That Shared movie. universe of Drumline, drumline Whiplash. Drumline Whiplash. <laughs> I mean, Cody come on, start let's making this script, Oh buddy. my God, start I'm sweating. Ooh, sorry about that. Um, no, no, please. No, but you're I, perfect. I, I, yeah. I enjoy him as a director. Okay. So I trust him. I'm not like as gung ho as like a, a Mance was about La La Land, like it's the greatest movie of all time. He's the only person. He no is the like ultimate that, so. drumline fan. I mean, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Was that a Freudian sorry. slip, or did yeah, you? Yeah, sorry. He, 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 no, I didn't mean. This I didn't mean to is do it. awesome. Sorry. Well, let's move. Let's move on. But I, I, I trust Damien Chazelle. I like his stuff. I will watch this. Makuga. We'll have to get together, and we'll have to have a little musical. Listen, good time. Here's what I'm going to do. I, I used to always say, Grace. I used to always say this before you came on the show that I would give every show a three episode test. Right. <laughs> then, as soon as I like, as soon as I started realizing that as much TV as I had to watch for Clatter TV Talk, that I could only really give it the pilot test. If right. the pilot didn't like grab at least like 65% of my intention, then I was out. I will give the pilot to the Eddie a test, but I swear to God, <laughs> if it's more La La Land BS of them like, we're in the streets of Paris, this is what dancing looks like, Emma Stone, like, I'm done, I'm done. I just, I can't do musicals, I can't do musical TV. If the so like, let me just put this out there. The music in La La Land, average at best. The dancing, I'm gonna crush the dancing on my da at my wedding way more than Gosling McGee over here could do. Okay, truth. The story was meh. So like, <laughs> what is what like Whiplash? Awesome story. Awesome music. Awesome drumming. Crazy. Drumline also great. Drumline incredible. Drumline incredible. So yeah, good. drumline. <laughs> I mean, I. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I feel like you are resident Emma Stone. I feel like you're ginger. stop. Thank you so much. Um, she's also from Arizona. We have a lot in common. It's totally fine. Whoa, um, whoa, whoa. 
I mean, I feel like the story is like a little too, it's kind of close to the plot of La La Land. And I'm, I'd am i be fine with this more if this is closer to the La La Land genre, which is, was like like a musical, but it wasn't, a not, you know, it's not the producers where there's yes. big tap numbers and crazy stuff, which I love the producers, don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, but I'm okay with it airing more on the side of La La Land than on the side of Glee, in yeah. which case mm. I will turn that shit straight off. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, but it's only going to be eight episodes. He's going to be directing two it's, of them. It's called The Eddie, which I'm guessing is like a jazz club <laughs> Right. I'm like, oh. Jesus. They were like, can we call it Seb's dad? Just the Eddie. <laughs> just just call like, it the Seb's. You know Sebbies. what I mean? It's kind of uh, like, yeah. All right. But anyway. There you go. Damien, <laughs> congratulations on all your success. Quit making music. You've done well. I mean, you know. <laughs> except Drumline. Except for Drumline. <laughs> except for <laughs> Drumline. <laughs> whiplash. Whiplash. Yeah. So here's the plot of Drumline. Nick Cannon couldn't read. Oh, oh, that's not this show. <laughs> all right, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> all right. Well, HBO has given the official green light to True Detective Season 3, announcing that Jeremy Saulnier will direct alongside creator showrunner Nick Pizzolatto. So, the official logline is thus. Season three of True Detective will tell the story of a macabre crime in the heart of the Ozarks and a mystery that deepens over decades and plays out in three separate time periods. Speaking of crossover, so it's just going to cross over <laughs> with, with Ozark on Netflix. Yeah, that's what we were talking about right off <laughs> air. It's like, shows up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, do you guys need help laundering money? Yeah. Let me tell you how to launder money. First, and it goes this whole <laughs> monologue. <laughs> yeah. First, what you're going to want to do is set up shell corporations. Yeah. Um, here's the thing, okay? True Detective season, we've talked at length about this. Mahershala Ali, incredible. You're telling me that the producers and writers of this show had no idea that Jason Bateman was doing a show called Ozark. Right. For like Netflix. a dark, gritty crime mm -hmm. drama. A dark, gritty crime drama that fits <clears throat> like, if you watch Ozark, it has totally, like total feelings of a True Detective. Now, the thing about Ozark that True Detective, like it doesn't focus around a cop. Right? It doesn't focus around the police. Right. Right. It focuses around like the seedy aspect of it. Right. Where True Detective always follows the cops. The cool idea is like three time periods over like three different things. I don't think I don't think you need that to I don't know. Like the whole pitch of it all doesn't get me super excited. Mm. Jeremy Sonier or Sonier, I don't know if we're going French, but maybe he's in the Eddie. I um, just went for like Ron Burgundy, like Sonier. Yeah. Sonier. Yeah. Um you know, he did Green Room, which I've never seen. Like Green Room, very good. Green Room is dope. Is, is it's it tense. It's, it's very really tense. Dope. Yeah. So, you know, he's he's like an up and comer, which is awesome. So he's got something to prove, which is which is really mm -hmm. cool. But again, this feels like a little bit of treaded water. No. Well, that's what I think we're all waiting to see because True Detective season one was so good. So many people loved it. I, I, I saw uh, someone online with Sweden that they just watched season one and they're about to start season two. And I was like, ooh. Yeah. Even though there are parts of season two that was good. I loved Colin Farrell in season yeah, he was two. He really good. He got oh some my good God, performances. He's so talented. But the head of HBO even said, he's like, look, I think I rushed him. And for season three, I want to give him time. So I think he has the time. He's already gone on by saying, like, the scripts are excellent. So I trust him because HBO usually puts out good work, yeah. usually. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to trust this is going to be good. Like, but Ozark is somewhat treaded water as well. Ozark was anything new, but yeah. it was done well. Yes. So that's all I'm asking for is let's just do it well. It doesn't have to be brand new stuff. Let's it's do just it well. like, right, because right. we had never really mm -hmm. been to it. Like, here's the thing. My brother lived in Northwest Arkansas. Mm -hmm. So that area of the country is gorgeous. And so I, for me, I had a little bit of like a partiality to it because I'd been there and it was really cool. But we, we've been there now. We've seen it, whatever. True Detective season one was in that really creepy part of Louisiana, meth, you know, all <laughs> that weird stuff. Then they go to L.A., which we've already seen a billion times before. L.A. Law, Hill Street right. Blues, 21 Jump Street. You guys get what I'm saying. Um, we need, like, an area of the country that we haven't seen. But where do we go? Fargo does Minnesota. Yeah, but we've, we can't do the South, but Justified. We've done the South a bunch. Yes. So, I mean, like, where would they? What about, like, Utah? What about some more? I mean, or like, but I'm saying like, what, what if about New Utah, Mexico? Utah's so like what about nice. Arizona? What about Arizona? There's all kinds of creepy well, stuff going on Well, it'd be more like a Arizona. Western then, which would be interesting. They could make it more be like awesome. a Western. Yeah, could well, like I mean, Western. if it was like old, yeah. Or like the Northeast, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire. That's some dirty stuff up there. Guaranteed. Stephen King's up there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's a small There's state. Dirty stuff There's not a lot of people I've up been to Vermont. Vermont's a beautiful place. They made great syrup. Yeah. Great syrup. Delicious. <laughs> it's the drum line of syrups. It's so good. <laughs> Look at me, a big sir. Hey, in uh, uh, what's the? I'm missing all my shows today. What is the show we're watching? Riverdale. 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 There's the guy that has a syrup conglomerate. Syrup conglomerate. Yeah. And he's shady. There was death and murder there. Yeah. yeah. We could have a conspiracy around the syrup. Shock yeah. Some shady people, syrup. Shock some shady. more people in Riverdale don't have diabetes. I mean, so that Mrs. That Butterworth's like whole enterprise. That's a shady business. Yeah. That's a front. I don't. I don't trust Miss Butterworth. Yeah. There's some. There's some shady. Right. Wow. Shady. Agreed. Yeah. See. Syrup. Syrup. Dirty money. Syrup. 
True Detective you, you heard syrup. it here first, TV talk That's audience. That's how it goes. Syrup, dirty. All right, what's next? <laughs> syrup, <Please>. dirty. <laughs> syrup equals dirty. Um, all right, so next I'm going to turn it over to these fine gentlemen for a nice little season three review of Narcos. <sighs> Prince yeah. Oberyn lives. He does. Prince Oberyn is Look alive. He's, so he's doing good. well. He's doing okay. That sweet, sweet mustache. Just he rocks it gym. well. It's I not like that like, wave. It's not creepy. Oh, the wave. Yeah. I'm trying to get the wave. No, I'm not trying. Um, <laughs> the here's the thing. When we were texting this weekend about mm -hmm. it, first of all, this is my favorite binge to do on Netflix. It's not the easiest one. It's not my favorite show on Netflix. It's my favorite binge because yeah. once you're in it, it's one long, beautiful movie mm -hmm. because. Each there isn't like one episode ends on like a cliffhanger and then you go to the next episode. It is one long amazing movie. You get invested in these characters. I tweeted out if t if drug TV teaches us anything, it's that it's better than drug movies because mm -hmm. you can do so much more with these unbelievable storylines. Which I know a lot of it is dr dramatized for TV and there's a lot, but a lot of this is very very true. This yeah. is like true stories. And when we wrapped on season 2 of Narcos last year, I was like, god, I wish they would go somewhere else and do another cartel. I'm glad they stayed in Colombia. I'm glad they did the Cali cartel mm -hmm. because the Cali cartel made Pablo Escobar look like minor leagues. Yeah. Cuz they had They were everybody like they were like, go they're like Google. Yeah. They were huge, yeah. yeah. I mean they're, they're, they they treat they were businessmen. Yeah. They treat themselves like we're the businessmen of Colombia, the drug trade, and then also they were they were hidden. Yep. Uh, Pablo Escobar wanted to be loved by the people. He went to like you know uh, football matches yeah. and you know donated a lot of money to the poor. He built communities, built homes. These guys kind of stayed hidden. Yes, they didn't want to be in the in the limelight. People like when Pablo Escobar went out in the streets, people knew it was Pablo yeah. Escobar. Out there, there's like oh, this is just another guy. And all these guys are good. These are actors that I'm not familiar with. I mean, you go on their IMDb, they've obviously worked in their home countries and done. And some of them have even done so. Like right. uh, the guy who played Chepe has been in shows like Shameless, but yeah. they're not mainstream actors in no. America. So, it, but they're all good. Incredible. All the, they're not all brothers, not all related. It's just Miguel and Gilberto are brothers, but yeah. they're just so good. I, I was invested in all of them. I the thing about this one too is uh, mm -hmm. I felt like I knew a little bit more about Pablo's yeah same cartel. Here. Same here. Yeah. So knowing more about this Cali cartel and how they were working mm -hmm. and who they were working with. All the characters, when you're following four main characters over yeah. a 10 episode show, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, like there's opportunity mm -hmm. for them to really kind of write one off and you're like, oh, what happened to him? You yeah. know what I mean? But they really kept all four characters in your central thing. You were, sometimes it's hard not to root for the bad guys in some of these yeah. things because, oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I love rooting for the bad guy. I'm totally, I'm like, go, Cersei. I love the bad <laughs> <Yeah>. guys. <laughs> yeah. It it had that, man, you know, they were just trying to surrender, but you knew they would never surrender. You knew, like, that was never going to work out, mm -hmm. and the government was never going to let them do it. So to have, and, and again, casting and all that kind of stuff is all of these terrible, terrible human beings that murdered so mm -hmm. many people, you couldn't help but sort of root for at points. But Kinda you like also, Breaking Bad? But yes, like Breaking Bad. But also, too, is a lot of times you don't root for the cops because they're kind of assholes, right? You don't really root for them. Mm -hmm. And... Narcos does a really, really great job of towing the line, right? It's not a, a show written totally from the cops' angle. It's no. not a show written totally from the drug dealer's angle, like a Scarface mm -hmm. or a Breaking Bad kind of a thing. Narcos tows the line on like three different things. And in this one, which was awesome, is they they followed... Basically, our main character for all of Narcos was this guy, Salcedo. Salcedo? Yeah, Jorge. Jorge Salcedo, yeah. who was the head of security by the end of the show of the cartel. But he was oh, also, shit. by the end, he realized that he was never going to get out. They were going to kill him. Mm -hmm. Or he was going to get killed. Or he was going to go to jail. So the only way he could get out was to, there, thanks, spoiler alert, was to cooperate with, this, with the DEA. Mm -hmm. And he was just, this, this actor, never seen him before. Swedish. He's a Swedish guy playing a Colombian. He could be in Vikings. Head of security. Yeah, he could. Put him in Vikings. Woo! Yeah. Put him in Vikings. Um, just <laughs> so ch like a charming guy that you rooted yeah. for this whole time, mm -hmm. even though, and the coolest thing about him, right? Like a British police officer doesn't carry a gun. All these right, guys have like right. submachine guns. He's right. the head of security and he's just like, I don't need a gun. And the guys are like, all the guys are like, how can we don't carry a gun, man? Yeah. He's like, I don't need one. Yep. He's like, I'm there to like supervise, monitor. I don't need a gun. Yeah. What, yeah. So I can get shot too? Yeah. Yeah. And his wife, Paula. Whew. Whew. Big That's fan. A, Pretty, pretty lady right there, man. <laughs> Some of the Latino women in, <laughs> in yeah, gorgeous. totally, guys. Yeah. So I'm like, Goodness. Maria Salazar, I love you. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, uh, also, too, I just want to mention quickly, like, I like how we're moving. Like, it's already been renewed. We're going to get a fourth season. We're going to Mexico. Yeah, we're going to Mexico. They're just moving through all of the different stories. Like, yes. we're getting to the point now where if you've seen Sicario that came out in 2015, it's not like Sicario. Like, we're not going to win the war on drugs. Never. We've lost. Like, there is no war on drugs anymore. Um, it's just now it's, like, controlling it. So, like, you see in Sicario, like, the CIA, all these... Department of Justice, Department of Defense, yeah. all, all trying just to control. Like they want to know who they want to control the guy on top. Yes. They'll let you sell drugs to a point, but if you things got a hand, we're gonna come in, change leadership, and then just kind of keep it going from there. Yeah. yeah. So that's where we're getting to right now. Yeah. So the end of it, which we don't know if Pena, our boy, who my my brother calls me on Friday, he's like, "Why didn't you tell me Narcos was coming out today?" I was like, "I didn't know. I was your TV guide. I'm really <laughs> right, sorry." Yeah. <laughs> He's like, How Netflix just you? sent me an email and said Narcos. I was like, I know. He's like, Pena. He's like, I'm alone all weekend. I have three kids. How am I going to watch Narcos? Yeah. I was like, so we just kept like texting each other all weekend. Like, mm -hmm. Pena, Pena, because he's the man. I'm going to be Pena for Halloween. I'm glad he's the lead in this season. Yes. No more. Uh, I, I like Boyd Holbrook's Boyd's fine. fine. But I, he's I, no I'm, Pena. No, he's, he's not but Pedro So we don't Pascal. know he's at the no end of season him. three if he's going to come and be a part of the, of the person that tries to take down some of the Mexican cartel. Because mm -hmm. uh, if it goes out like it went out and Pena's just, you know, working with his dad in Laredo. Elder James Almos. Right. Elder James Almos. <laughs> Don Hector. Don Hector, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, just, I'll tell you what, man, I, I can't talk highly enough about this show. Yeah. Season two had like a little bit of a lull, just a tiny little lull, mostly because we were just following Pablo the whole time. But God, this season three was incredible. It's my favorite. It's incredible. It's my favorite. Yeah. God, so good. All right. Uh, what's next, Grace? Man, you guys really like soul. I gotta like. I was like binging True Detective and Top of the Lake this weekend, and I missed out. And I need to brush up on my Spanish, so I'm gonna do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but next, we're gonna head over to this fine lad for some great British breakdown. I almost forgot because I forgot we had a holiday yesterday here yeah. in the states, you know, Labor Day. So I forgot. I'm like, oh, that's right. It's not Monday. It's the Great British Breakdown. Yeah. So there's a lot of exciting things coming out on television here in the states. I know I usually mention a lot of things that are happening in the UK, and people. Like, well, I can't watch that right now. It's like, well, just get a little flat in the UK. You fly over on the weekends <laughs> and you watch the TV. That's all you have to do. Anybody can do that. It's so affordable. Spoken. London, London is so cheap. It really is. It's so cheap. One you of can the get most affordable steal. cities in Remember, the world. You don't, you don't, they don't call them apartments. It's a flat. It's a flat. It's a flat. Thanks, Dave. I don't know why. Why is it? Is it flat? I don't really understand I don't know. that. I think it's flat. Yeah, I guess it's flat. There's I mean, no angles. I guess it's flat. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. It's not like you're um, walking uphill in your apartment. So in the States on Sunday, we are getting the new season of Top of the Lake, which is very exciting. Yeah. Um, Top of the Lake is one of the better shows that came out. It's like four years ago now. I think it was 2013. Yeah. Yeah. Jane Campion, an amazing director and writer, uh, shot that in New Zealand. It's coming back to Australia. Brienne of Tarth. Is going to be a new. I think she's like a new recruit to the police force. Okay. Um, it's an anthology, right? So it's an anthology. It's a brand new oh, season. I'm in. No, I mean she's still the same character. So the same events have happened. Right. So I think there'll be some, you know, carryover. Carryover, but it's a brand new story, like like a true detective kind right. of. So I'm very excited about that. Watch that on Sundance TV. I know my people in the UK. You've already seen it, but but you were saying to me that each episode here in the states is going to be two. And so a half it's two hours. hours and 39 minutes. It's a lot of TV. They're doing six episodes in three weeks. You're okay. getting two episodes a week. So just. You're going to be sitting down there Hold for on a long to your time. butts. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. Um, also, too, we are getting Outlander season three. Yay! We'll be out on Stars this Sunday. I already saw it at Comic Con. I was very excited about that. I saw the first yeah. episode. It is excellent. Yes. Um, Jamie and Claire are separated by time. It's like Back to the Future. Oh, no. Yeah. And I know it's <laughs> just sad. like Back to the so Future. So we're going to see 20 years of what they're doing uh, apart a, from each other. So how how much Huey Lewis is in Outlander? Not a lot Gotta of Huey Lewis. Back in time. <laughs> 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 and no, no Michael J. Dan, Fox. Dan, 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 Dan. Dan. There's also a show I want to keep you folks all alert to, and I believe this is a show that's airing in the UK and the States at the same time. Sundance TV, I believe it's around September 27th. There's a new show coming out called Liar. 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 Whoa. And it has the lady it's... who played uh, Lady um, Anne. I think her name's Anne from Downton Abbey. <gasps> and um, also, uh, who else is in there? Oh, the guy who played uh, Fantastic Four. He was a uh, doctor or... The really thin guy. He played Mr. Fantastic. Oh, right. I forgot whatever that actor's name is. British yeah, guy. He's in there, too. That looks it. interesting as well. It's called Liar. It's going to be on Sundance TV here in the States. I'm not sure where it's airing in the UK. But there's a lot of good UK television coming out very soon. Yeah. A lot of I good own shows. Gruffled. Yeah, I own Gruffled. Is it like A1 Rayon? <laughs> yeah, it's A1 Rayon. It's like Rayon. A1 Rayon. Rayon. Yeah, I own Gruffled. <laughs> now, a lot of people have been, and this is totally not British related, right, but right. A1 Rayon is in the show. A lot of people have been asking, did we see the... Inhumans. I am seeing it. I'm either going to see it today or tomorrow. I am okay. going to see it. I'm so see apparently, it. Schnepp and all them saw it. I heard it's awful. Heard it's, it was horrendous. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm going to spend the money to go that's to see it. That's the thing. Like, I don't want to drop $20 I to know, go see something that's go, horrible. Yeah. So I may just wait until it comes out on ABC so the rest of the world that doesn't go to see it on IMAX, yeah. we can review it properly. Also, again, uh, you know, 
got to spend that hard-earned cash at the movie theaters going to see it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in, Inhumans apparently is getting absolutely destroyed. We got no tweets about it this weekend, really. Nobody was Nobody going to cares, see it. Nobody cares, yeah. Uh, I think, poor, like, Marvel TV... I, they are like they're they're like a baseball player, a, a really high paid baseball player. Th- they go two for five uh, on a good night. Do you know what I mean? So the Netflix series are awesome, totally. but then they two giant strikeouts, and you're like, what? How is this getting past mm-hmm. people? Like, how, who, yeah. who's approving? Where is it going? How, how are scripts not seen for these Marvel properties? Marvel. Yeah. How are these scripts not being seen? Being right. like, I don't know if that's yeah. good. Because if right. everybody else is like, this sucks, how is Marvel still being like? make it Mm -hmm. also if anybody has the budget it's marvel yes hello that dog what the yeah no it's so (laughs) it just looks like a network tv show it does but shot on imax cameras i'm like it's not dunkirk (laughs) dunkirk you shoot on imax cameras you don't shoot an abc drama on imax cameras it's not a giant pug in humans colon it's not dunkirk it's not dunkirk oh my goodness yeah, All right. <laughs> Sorry. Should we do some Twitter questions, Grace? Oh, yes, we shall. Uh, we're going to go to our friend at DSS Spicy. Oh. Ah, Mrs. Grace Face. I'll spice it up. I see what you did there, and I like it. <laughs> All spice. What's the scariest show you watched after binging it on Amazon? I say Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, yeah. Unsolved oh, as a kid. That terrified me terrifying. as a kid. No, it was, oh, really? uh, no, it was America's Most that. Wanted. America's Most Wanted. I remember also. I was living outside of Buffalo, and they'd be like, and he was last seen in Jamestown. And I'm like, Jamestown's only 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, I was like looking out my windows, freaking uh, out. Yeah. Like, right That's there so waiting sad. for me. It's the terrifying. Pittsburgh Strangler. The Pittsburgh Strangler. I live there. Because the guy who hosted that show, remember, his son was kidnapped. Yes. That's why he did that show. And it's just yep. like, whew, yeah. scary. Oh. Yeah, Unsolved real. Mysteries, uh, America's Most Wanted. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of these true crime ones obviously scared the hell out of me. Um, but I, do you ever watch um, uh, Gangsters on A&E? It's like mm-hmm. about real life gangsters. So they'll, you know, they'll follow like, motor clubs or they'll follow guy and these are these aren't like mob bosses from the 60s that are like no, all glamorous yeah. this is some dude that created a meth empire and has killed like 500 people and is still on the run yeah. and you're just like where, where, are they, where are these people coming from and they show real crime scene footage of just oh, bodies splitting yeah. everywhere yeah. and I'll have some good nightmares from those it's terrifying oh, yeah. I, probably, yeah. I probably would say American Horror Story not necessarily because it's like scary like oh, but some <laughs> of the stuff is like real creepy mm-hmm. like real disturbing and mm-hmm. you're like oh that doesn't sit right and then I'm like live alone and I'm like why did I do that Grace why do I do this to myself but I love it um but yeah no but like the true crime stuff totally does not scare me because sometimes mm-hmm. my mom because my mom and I love Dateline <laughs> and my dad will be like how can you guys watch that it's so dark mm-hmm. but for me it's total like I totally am not I'm like this is so fascinating human nature like it never affects mm. me like that Mark Riley was telling us a story about a woman I think it was on Dateline or something about a woman that lived in an apartment for like three years and then one night she heard a thump and there had been a man living in her like in her attic for three oh, years. Oh, that's a real thing. That's also an episode of Criminal, the podcast. Uh, also, man. I have somebody that I know like personally whose ex-husband was living under the floorboards of her home. And I won't like it. It, it can't didn't be good end well. for your back. It can't no, be good for your no, back. No, no, for sure. A lot of chiropractor appointments. Yes, we shall. Okay. Um, from our friend at Miss Wonder Chia. I yes. love chia seeds. Chia, 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 chia. Chia. <laughs> um, what's your favorite? What's your go-to TV show to binge when you're feeling down? Uh, Narcos. You know, Narcos. <laughs> yeah. It's my favorite binge. No, you know what? Sometimes I, I just I'll throw on. Uh, obviously Seinfeld on Hulu. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to say like Friends or fam- like How I Met Guy is always mm-hmm. for me. Like season oh, five, yeah. four, five, or six of Family Guy is just still so friggin' hysterical. Yeah. I'll throw that on anytime. It'd be for like seasons four through eight of The Simpsons. Like yeah. old school Simpsons, old yeah. school Seinfeld. Those yeah. shows make me laugh. Yeah, yeah make me feel for good. Sure. For mm-hmm. sure. Or maybe when I'm feeling real dumb-dumb, I'll turn on some ridiculousness with my boy Rob Deerdeck because <laughs> oh, I love no. that shit. I love Grace. it. Don't judge me. It's I ha- so no, funny. I like, no, no, no. I got a text this weekend I'm not from, sorry for the way I am. I got a text from this weekend from friend of the show, Roxy Stryer, and she was like, do you watch Spouse House on TLC? And I was like, what? <laughs> Spouse House? He's like, so here's what happens. Bunch of people that aren't married get together in a house, and if you don't want to marry this person, you have to get out of the house. And I'm like, that's the most terrible. I'm going to watch it. So I watch an episode <laughs> of Spouse House. Show so you're watching Spouse House, and like, I get judged for ridiculous. Not, wow. not gonna lie, Spouse House kind of a good idea for a show. It's it's kind of entertaining. Spouse it's like that house. Married at First Sight show. Is yes, that TLC? Just like that. Yes, yeah, just like that. But in a house. But in a house. With Way to switch it up, TLC. Yeah. I see what, what they did what? there. Did it. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, that's all I that's got. That's it. All right, should we do a uh, 
Maybe I'll do a British accent for David today. Oh, um, thank you. A pick of the day. <laughs> Would you like a pick of the day, David? No? Is that, is that a bad accent? I was, like, not prepared no? for that. Oh, pick of the day. Uh, David, if you could pick a foreign country to be a DEA agent in, what would it be? <gasps> I love him. Oh, a foreign country? Well, I cried when he died. Oh, you want to be a DEA agent in the foreign... Spoiler like, alert. Yeah. So He's you go it. as an ambassador. <laughs> but all the... So I know... All right, so people always get angry, like, well, David, you know, it's not really the UK, man. I get it. I'm not... <laughs> I'm I'm Welsh. <laughs> I'm not British. I'm bloody Welsh. I know it's a different area. So if, let's say let's say there was no jurisdiction issues. I'd love to hang out in, in Wales. Welsh. Like I know it's not the same. I know it's a different area. I'm I'm Welsh. I'm in the Wales, uh, the UK, uh, like London area, Scotland, Ireland, I know they're all different. But I would love to be like in so in you those go areas. Drug enforcement agent. If I could just be in, in that area, a D agent, all those areas, I'd love to do that. Like David, we need you in Wales. Great, David. Yeah. We're gonna need you in uh, Ireland. Great, David. We need you in Scotland. I'd be all over that. Shh. I have my nice little house in Inverness with, with, with my lady. Yeah. I'm all set. <laughs> I, I think I, like you would, you would. I, I would, I would first go tropical, right? I, like you know, like I would go to Costa Rica and try and bring down like the cocaine, like the the way they bring in the cocaine mm. through Costa Rica or whatever. But then I think about bugs, and there's a lot of bugs in tropical places. <clears throat> no thanks. Spain would be great. <laughs> Spain, Spain would be Spain, I've been to Spain yeah. before. Spain's beautiful. Spain's yeah. beautiful. But mm. I'm I'm thinking I go Japan, try and bring Ooh. down the drug trade in Japan. I love sushi. Love an island nation, really crowded. I could have a Japanese flat. Me and, and, and the wife could like live over there. We'd become immersed in Japanese culture. Well, like, well, like the, 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 the Yakuza, is that the group yeah, over there? Yeah, bring down the Yakuza. I get to see Makuga walking into like, like, hey, yo, where's the drugs? Where the drugs at? Man? Look at you, like, go full bad boys yeah. on them. Yeah, they're like, where's the sushi? You don't belong here. I'm like, of course I don't. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Yakuza coming down. Of course, you can't do that as a law enforcement agent, but you know that's only. Ah, yeah, you Grace. totally can. I'd probably do like one of the like like Nordic countries, like uh. Norway or a Sweden, where I assume there's not a gigantic war on drugs. So it would be like a real <laughs> chill job. Well, let me show you something real quick since it's uh, a Great British Breakdown. I have like thirty seconds. Yeah. Um, I'm watching this show called Endeavor. Bringing it back. And like, and, and like, it back. And it's in the 60s. <laughs> and, there's, and, and, they're, and they're detectives, but they don't carry guns. Like, it seems kind of like a low stress job. I mean, look, being a cop's tough, but since these guys don't have guns, they don't have to worry about really killing anybody for the most part. So yeah. it's like, I feel like maybe being a cop, like in Endeavor in the 60s, just like smoke cigarettes and just talk very British and solve oh, crimes. Man. And like drink coffee that. and, and drink be like sultry and, and smoke uh, at you my desk. Nice lady on the side. Like typewritering. Yeah, I could do that. awesome thing about being a cop. They're always just smoking cigarettes and Yeah, they just smoke a lot. Like indoors. Like a it's not good yeah. for the lungs, yeah. yeah. Not good. All right, that'll do it for our first 9 a.m. Collider TV talk. We're <laughs> going to try and be a little more fresh-faced for you tomorrow <laughs> after a long holiday weekend. Before we get out of here, David, where can the good people find you on the Internet? When I'm not doing my tour of duty uh, for the DEA over there uh, in, in, in the land of... <laughs> Milk and honey. Uh, I'm right here on Clatter TV Talk every day. I don't know what that meant. Sorry. Uh, at Griffin D and Twitter on Instagram. <laughs> the land of milk and honey. Oh man, David. where is the land of milk? Is that like I a think it's Africa? Oh, that's was, Africa. That oh. was in the, wasn't that the movie with that's Angelina racist. Jolie in the land of milk and honey? It was like in Africa. No, it's something close to that though. It's like vanilla and I don't wow, know. Wow, we're, we're really messing up here at the end. I'm sorry. Uh, I apologize for that. <laughs> lavender, <laughs> lavender and teddy bears. We're, yeah. we're tripping at the finish line, but you can find me online everywhere at Mrs. Grace Face and also in my home binge watching Drumline. There you. Go. <laughs> over and over and over. I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram, the Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. Uh, we'll be back here tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 Eastern England. You know what I mean. Put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.